Hey, what's up, guys? So, up next, we're going to talk about the fall of Afghanistan, part two. Now, this is going to be a shorter video. It's going to be pretty quick. I'm just going to do the first part of this news segment from NBC. Now, just so y'all know, NBC, as far as the mainstream media goes, they are my favorite ones. And I know a lot of you are going to be shocked by that because, oh, NBC's terrible. They're, you know, but just stick with me because I think I'm going to surprise you. I really do. You know, to me, I think they are as close to the middle as a news broadcast station can be. Now, I could be wrong, but just stick with me. We'll find out together. So, let's go. <laughs> In Afghanistan have restored control of what for many is the only way out. Thousands of U.S. troops now firmly in charge of the military side of the Kabul airport where flights have resumed. Today, fewer scenes of complete chaos, but no less amount of fear and desperation among those who once called Americans colleagues. And now we're asking for recognition and help to start a new life far from the Taliban. It is a country holding its breath tonight, weighing lofty, reassuring statements by the Taliban against searing memories of who the Taliban are and what they are capable of. Richard Engel and his team are in Kabul tonight with details. Today, we made it onto the military side of Kabul airport. This is where the U.S. is carrying out its final withdrawal from Afghanistan. The American flag still flies here. This side of the airport has long been an American and NATO base, and it's full, with extra troops brought in to protect the evacuation. This has become effectively the last U.S. military base in Afghanistan, the last presence of American troops in this country after 20 years. And they're only focused on one thing, wrapping it up. The evacuations are mainly bringing out Americans and other foreign nationals, along with Afghans who managed to get visas who are happy to be leaving. Peace. Hundreds packed into one American cargo jet. The Biden administration has promised to expedite visas for Afghans who worked for the U.S. military. But tens of thousands are still waiting. I spoke to a group of Afghans. They've all worked on this base for over five years. Not one has a visa. What did you do on this base? What was we your work, job? Yeah, I work in billeting office. In the billeting office? Billeting office. Finding yeah. people, places to yeah, rooms. Yeah. If you go back home, are you worried? If you go in outside, of course they will kill us. You're here. You all have badges. You're yeah. on this base yeah. and you can't get out? That seems like a total collapse of bureaucracy or it seems like they just don't care. Yeah, they don't care, I think. So what is it like for all of you to... You see what they're saying? Do you, are you seeing what's going on here? This is NBC. Mainstream media. And they're calling out this administration as a failure. Watch these planes take off in front of you yeah. and know that you can't oh, get on one. Yes, we are, we're crying. It works so uh, sad for us. Do you feel betrayed? Yeah, yeah. Even worse than the lack of action, they say, is the lack of concern. This is the first time that somebody asks about our lives. Nobody before come to ask what's your problem. What your problem, uh, family have up in danger is or no, no, nobody. So this us. Yeah, this is talking to you. This, this is the first time. Outside the airport, there's utter desperation. Afghans pushing and pleading to get in and board a flight away from Taliban rule. 
they don't believe the Taliban, which today promised to be different, that women will have rights, a free press, and a general amnesty for translators who help the U.S. military. Men like Tom, which is what U.S. troops called him. We've been following his story for months. He went on combat missions and helped American troops find and kill Taliban fighters. He's been waiting for his visa for four years and asked us to blur his face because today he's in hiding. Wow. You know, I think our our priorities have been way out of alignment. You know, it's going to be hard in the future to get people to help us. You know, because they're going to they're going to hear stuff like this and they're going to say, "Why? Are you ever going to do anything to help me?" If I'm in harm's way and I need help, are you going to help me? Doesn't look like it. They will kill us. They will kill us tomorrow, today, or this mild tragedy. So what's going to be their future? Afghans we spoke to say they were wrong to trust American promises. As the Don't U.S. You? is leaving Afghanistan in the hands of extremists and leaving so many allies behind. Richard, that image is stuck in our minds of people trying to clamber aboard a moving jet yesterday. You're at the Kabul airport. What's it like now? It is much more secure. Those people have been cleared out. Planes are able to take off and land. There are jets in the sky, many more troops here. The biggest danger is the perimeter, with Afghans still trying to push their way into the airport. Lester. All right, Richard, thanks to you and your team. There is mounting pressure on the Biden administration to get those Americans and allies out quickly and safely and growing criticism of its overall handling of the withdrawal. Peter Alexander is at the White House for us. Facing growing pressure to accelerate the evacuations of thousands of Americans and Afghan allies, the Biden administration tonight relying on the Taliban to clear the way. The Taliban have informed us that they are prepared to provide the safe passage of civilians to the airport, and we intend to hold them to that commitment. Unclear if those evacuations can be completed by the president's end of the month deadline. Has the Taliban given assurances that this will go till August 31st? Is the deadline before that or after that? We believe that this can go till the 31st. Notably, senior White House officials did not commit to evacuations after that date. Today, also conceding that state-of-the-art American military equipment, including Black Hawk helicopters, is now lost. Certainly a fair amount of it has fallen into the hands of the Taliban. And... Uh, Wow. <laughs> now y'all look. I was just having a conversation with my brother about this. And this is what he told me. And I asked him if he could find something to show that. I wasn't expecting to get verification from the mainstream media. Which is something that we have been hearing for years that was impossible for the mainstream media to take side you know that the mainstream media is completely partisan right as a whole they're completely partisan I don't believe that some of them might be some of the channels might be you know, and hey, since I'm looking at this right here, you know, what I'm going to do is this story. I'm going to start looking at all the different channels and I want to see all the reports, all the clips they're showing. And if there's a discrepancy, because right now I'm thinking NBC is being straight with this. I think they are. Now, I'm going to take a look. I'm going to go through and I'm going to start watching a whole bunch of different channels on this specific story. Right? And I'm going to see, like I said, you know, which ones are being honest and which ones ain't. Now, 
hey, this is unreal. This is unreal. Obviously, we, we don't have a sense that they are going to readily hand it over to us at the airport. Current and former officials tell NBC News in recent weeks, the CIA began to warn in increasingly clear terms about the potential for a rapid collapse of the Afghan government and military. But it's unclear whether that warning was a factor in the president's deliberations. The buck stops with me. Critics are slamming the administration for a lack of preparedness. It has been impotent and incompetent and is a strategic catastrophe for America. Tonight, for the first time since Kabul fell, President Biden spoke with British Prime Minister Boris Johnson and agreed to meet next week with the G7 leaders on the strategy going forward. Lester? Peter Alexander at the White House, thank you. The it's funny how they want to have a strategy now, later on. <laughs> Not like, right this minute, we need to have a strategy going forward. Oh, no. <laughs> We're going to meet, like, next, what do you say, like, next week? <laughs> This guy, this guy, man, <laughs> what's he doing? Biden administration also dealing with a worsening COVID crisis more than one. Okay, so let me find another clip and we're going to play that right after this. And then I'll put links to both, both of the clips I'm showing. Now, one thing I want to point out real quick, one of the reasons why I believe NBC is honest, when they do their nightly news, they don't do them like every day, but I think it's like every other day, they'll, they'll put out a segment just like this. And you see what's up here at the top of the screen? What is that? <laughs> it's a date. It's a date. They put it up there. Y'all, you can go through and you can watch NBC Nightly News. You could type in a date and then you could start seeing everything they posted during that time period. It's incredibly helpful because they, look, they even put the whole year, 2021. I seen, I was looking for other channels that did this. There was like only one other channel and they only had like a, maybe two or three news segments with the dates on them like this. A lot of other ones, it would have just said August 17th. Well, great. You didn't put the year. So now if we want to watch that a few years down the road, we're not going to know what year that was from. So you've now discredited yourself because you didn't put the year you didn't you know hey nbc i think is legit because they do this you know you could go back and you can watch and i've done this before i added a whole bunch of them in order to a huge playlist and then i went through and i watched them because I had already seen most of the news clips that I was watching then in order back to back. And so I knew, right, that nothing had been altered or changed. Because I had already seen it as the stories were happening. You know, because I remembered the progression, right? So, and I'm not even going to say what the, the story was. I'm just saying, there was a big story. And I was watching it progress. And I was watching it in order back to back. Because they put the dates on so you can put them in order. You know, and I could do that for a lot more things. And then we could watch them on here. For They go back pretty far, y'all. They really do. All right. Now, let's find this other clip. Okay, guys, here we go. So I've got another clip loaded up. We're just going to watch maybe the first five or six minutes of it. Of course, I'll put the link in the description. And I can already see the date on the on the board that's next to him here. Because I know some people might like discredit that. Like, oh, they're going to try and lie to you about the dates. Because the dates are important. They're very important. 
Now, <laughs> you, A, so the date is there, right? And that's the date that's going to pull up at the top of the screen. So let's see, August 16th, 2021. Now, if I can see it, right under where it says Nightly News with Lester Holt, right under that. And then, let's see if the date matches. Tonight, President Biden defending August the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. August 16th, 2021. So, as you can see, <laughs> there's no, like, trickery going on here. You know what I'm saying? Let's, hey, let's get right into this. Afghanistan as the country falls to the Taliban. The stunning images, desperate Afghans clinging to a U.S. military plane about to take mm. off from Kabul. The airport in chaos. People scrambling to get out. U.S. Hey. troops firing warning shots. Hey, this is, this is, I don't know. I don't know what this is, y'all. I don't know. This, hey, this is terrible. That's what this is. As they are overrun by the crowd, President Biden under pressure, breaking days of silence, saying he stands squarely behind his decision to leave and there never was a good time to withdraw. But acknowledging the Taliban blitz came faster than expected. And my conversation with retired General David Petraeus, the former top U.S. commander in Afghanistan. Could this catastrophe have been avoided? This is NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good evening, everyone. For two decades, we wondered how our longest war would end. Now we know a total collapse that will be remembered by its swiftness and by its own Saigon moment. Afghan civilians desperate to leave their country trying to climb aboard a U.S. transport plane as it taxied for takeoff. President Biden today addressed the American people. Now, I want y'all to really think about that for a minute. Could you really imagine how desperate you got to be to hang on the outside of a plane as it's taking off? Now, there's really no words to describe that. You know what I'm saying? There's no words you could really come up with to put that into perspective. You know, most people are afraid of heights. <laughs> they, most people, a lot of people are afraid to fly. Even being inside of a plane. Hey, I'm one of those people. I won't fly for nothing. And then look at this. They're hanging on to the outside of a plane, knowing, okay, they they got to have that in their mind. They know there's no possible way they can stay holding on to a plane as it's flying through the air. <laughs> there's no way, you guys, you can't. I think they go, what, 300 miles an hour? Do you think they can hold on to the outside of a plane while it's going 300 plus miles an hour? Now, if I'm wrong about that, y'all put it in the comments, but I'm pretty sure 300 is about what they fly. You know, hey, either way it goes, those things are booking it. And it, even if they could hold on, the altitude alone would be impossible to survive in because the air is so thin you can't breathe in it. Okay? you There's no oxygen up there. Not enough. There's not enough oxygen up there. And then... You have the cold because of how fast you're flying through the air. 
right? You you would freeze. To put this into perspective, y'all, there was an episode of Air Disasters. And what had happened, an engine had failed and a part flew off and busted one of the windows. A rapid decompression happened and the woman that was sitting there, right by that window, she was sucked out. And the top half of her body was hanging out of the plane. And they were trying to pull her back in. By the time they got her back in, she was gone. There is no possible way you can survive if you're hanging on the outside of a plane while it's taken off. As soon as that plane gets above, you know, 10 or 15 feet, you're done. You're done. You know, you might survive the fall at that point if you jumped off. If you're just like, well... You know, I changed my mind. I don't want to go out that way. If you jump off then at 10 or 15 feet, you're going to get severely hurt. You know, and because it's concrete and, and the speed, I bet at that speed at 10 or 15 feet, no, you're done. I'm, I'm pretty sure there would not be a way to survive that. So... Even if they, even while it's on the ground, y'all, I just thought about that. Even while it's on the ground, right? Once they take off and they're shooting down the runway, right? At probably over a hundred miles an hour, at least, probably even more. They probably even go faster in order to reach takeoff speed before they lift off. So while it's taking off, you know, you're as soon as it reaches up to a certain speed, there's no way to survive it. Because you're on the outside of a plane, and it's and it's, it, once it takes off and it gets probably 80 to 100 miles an hour, then you're like, hey, I don't want to do that. I want to jump off. Well, guess what? You're already too late. You know, even while it's on the ground, I bet you they're going way too fast. And even if you jumped off while it was on the ground, you would not survive it. That That is unreal. They know they can't survive that trip. They know they, they got to know that. Y'all, they got to know they have zero chance at surviving that way. But they're just hoping for a miracle. I guess, you know... How much of a disaster this is. More quickly than he expected, with the Taliban taking control in just three months after the start of the U.S. withdrawal. The president calling the images of Afghans trying to flee gut-wrenching, but resolute that there will be no turning back the clock in Afghanistan, blaming Afghans for not fighting for themselves, saying after 20 years he will not put more American lives at risk. Tonight, however, American troops are still arriving to secure the Kabul airport and the departure of American and allied civilians. Richard Engel leads our team on the ground in Kabul. Tens of thousands of Afghans swarmed into Kabul airport, desperate to leave at any price. They burst through security, climbed over walls, and spilled onto the tarmac searching for any airplane that would take them far away from Afghanistan, away from the Taliban. So many managed to cram into one plane, the pilot refused to take off. People on board refused to disembark. But it was across a barbed wire divide where it turned really ugly. On the military side of the airport, American troops trying to evacuate U.S. Embassy staff found themselves overwhelmed, suddenly battling crowds, firing warning shots. This was not the mission they came for. The Pentagon says U.S. troops shot dead two armed Afghans. But still, the crowds didn't disperse. Instead, they ran along and clung to the undercarriage of a military transport plane as it taxied for takeoff. One U.S. military official told me 
it was a hundred times worse than the humiliating American pullout from Saigon. Afghans are running from the... Yeah, see, I don't know anything about that. I don't know anything about that. But, hey, this is... This is something else, y'all. How... How could Joe Biden justify this? Those are human beings. And you've already seen it. He knew this was going to happen. He knew it. As soon as our military left, he knew they were going to fall. He knew that. And did he make preparations? Did he get, like I said, all the people who wanted to leave? And did he do anything to help them? Did, did he try and achieve the best possible outcome? No. He just said, eh, to hell with it. Hey, hey, I, I don't know what, I don't know what kind of, you know, I don't know, y'all. I'm lost for words. I am lost for words right now. Taliban, now in full control. Today, setting up checkpoints with the very weapons American taxpayers bought for the Afghan army, which collapsed instead of fighting after the U.S. pulled out of bases and left them without air support. And the U.S. didn't see this coming? You know, if you give someone money for the specific purpose and you tell them you want that spent for a specific thing and then they turn around and don't use that towards what they were supposed to, because that was in the agreement. That's wrong. That's wrong. The, all our taxpayer dollars has just went to aid the Taliban army. Y'all. How ridiculous. Joe Biden couldn't have made sure that that didn't happen? <laughs> that, that they had a plan? Like, as soon as he took office, they could have had, you know, meetings to go over a, a strategy and a game plan so that as soon as they left, they were ready to stand guard and protect their country from this. And if they, they should have known, they should have seen warning signs and they should have made sure they had enough people that were willing to stand and fight and had a good chance of staying and keeping that from happening. And if they didn't, then Joe Biden should have listened and said, look, you guys got to get on the ball. Do whatever you got to do. Get them ready. To protect their homeland. To protect the land. But. No. He just said. No we're done. We're you know. That's. Hey that's insane. We reported on the tremendous security vacuum created when the U.S. left Bagram Air Base two months ago, leaving it so undefended and empty, I was able to bike down the runway. The warning signs were there. And this weekend, Kabul was taken without resistance. And the Afghan president fled. Still in the country are tens of thousands of Afghan interpreters marked for death by the Taliban who today were taking their meals in the presidential palace, settling in, celebrating their victory. As we drove through Kabul, it's clear the Taliban's hardline Islamist rule is creeping back. This was a popular beauty salon, styling women's hair and makeup. The Taliban banned salons, along with education for women and girls. So when the Taliban returned... Now they've painted over the beauty shop. 
People here know what the Taliban want. They know what the Taliban expect. We watched a man tear up the beauty parlor sign in line with the Taliban's wishes. A 20-year war, the longest in U.S. history. Today ended in disgrace. The U.S. leaving. Do y'all see that? Ended in disgrace. This is NBC. The mainstream media is calling Joe Biden a disgrace. Let that sink in for a minute. <laughs> Behind a country, its citizens are too terrified to live in. The administration maintaining it was taken by surprise. And Richard Engel joining so us now. Sad. Richard, everything seems to hinge on the operations at the airport. Are planes taking off and landing again? Uh, they are. Uh, they, they were paused for several hours because of the crush of people trying to get out. But now the airport appears to have been cleared because for the last several minutes we've heard plane after plane arriving. They're not on the ground very long. They load up with people and they leave. So it seems like they're trying to make up for lost time. Richard, continue to stay safe. Thank you. President Biden addressed the nation for the first time since the Taliban takeover, expressing surprise it happened so quickly, but defending his decision to end American involvement after two decades. Peter Alexander is at the White House. Okay, we've already seen a lot of that. You know, hey, this is beyond stupid. What an absolute disgrace all right y'all i'm going